Hello everyone, Tetsuo315 here, and uh, this is an update to the virtual pipe organ. It's been a long time since I've made the first one, and I know I had stated in the last that I would actually be showing you the various functions by me demonstrating them by playing the thing. Well, I've been pretty busy uh, in the IT world, and I just come home and don't feel like playing with this. Um, I have improved upon it. I've added more buttons and added another manual there. As you can see, the last one had four, or rather three. And I moved my uh, Korg Nano Control up to here where I originally said I wanted it. This is now my copper rail. It's now right where it's supposed to be. Um, added some more buttons and added another set of divisionals for the solo manual divisional cancels and one of those is going to be Swartz Fondo I can't even say Swartz Fondo, excuse me uh, reversible and I don't know what I'm going to do with these other two couplers last time I said I didn't know what I wanted to do with those couplers so for a homebrew virtual console with a bunch of cheap keyboards I have quite a quite a few pistons on here. Most most consoles of this size really don't have this many. I think they could have many. I've seen it with more. Uh, I suppose the next thing will be to add uh, is to decide whether I want to do touch screens or manual stop control rather than solenoid stop control. Um, I really like how the uh, Cavier cold organs were built and uh, that would really be interesting to learn how to play that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, I'm getting a, a few questions about how I integrated these pistons and the toe studs and how I got them to work with the J-Organ software. First and foremost, each of the pistons and the toe studs are not integrated to each of the keyboard circuitry. They are completely separate they all terminate back to this little box right here that I have opened up. They all, each button represents the button on a keyboard from a PC. This right here is a PC keyboard encoder. All these buttons have all their wiring consolidated into a matrix, columns and rows combination of a column and a row, as I said before, equals a particular key press, whether it's an A, B, colon, semicolon, a number, what have you, i.e., caps lock. Well, these lights are the caps lock, number lock, and scroll lock lights, and each of these buttons, I think we have F1, C, and I think I made that a semicolon. And that all terminates back to this little control box. As you can see here we have three barrier strips. There's more wires on this. These are the common ground if you will or the columns and these are the rows. There's more rows. I think there's about 15 here. Um, there may be less. I don't feel like counting. I know there was quite a bit. So you take and multiply your columns by your, your rows there have as many keys on a keyboard. Fortunately I couldn't use every single key because J-Organ doesn't like certain types of uh, keys. Um, doesn't like the escape key, doesn't like the actual number lock on off button. Um, so I had to not use that button. I had to not use the caps lock button. I had to not use the scroll lock button. I had to use something else and turn on the lights with other keys on the keyboard. Translate those key presses into MIDI messages via a program called Bohm's MIDI Translator. It takes regular keyboard presses and translates that into MIDI signals that you could play an instrument with. You could play piano, sample with a uh, standard PC keyboard with that software. I use that software for something else. So that's what I did to get this to work right. 
Um, I'm just going to walk around here to the back of the console. So, as I said before, the buttons wiring passes right through the keyboard and out the back. I utilize these um, Ethernet keystone punch down blocks using uh, the standard Ethernet um, wiring schemes. Sometimes I'd have to use all eight contacts, sometimes I didn't have to. So I've got five buttons here, but less than ten wires. Two contacts for every button. And those go and use a standard Ethernet um, patch cable, and those go back to my encoder box. So that's what it looks like behind here. Um, braces to support each of the manuals. Tiered keyboard stand. Pedal board is also operated in a similar manner. I used a keyboard encoder to run the pedal board. I figured, well, I'm not going to have to have much in the way of polyphony when it comes to multiple key presses. At most times, you only need to use two two notes on a pedal board. You can play more if you want to, but this is temporary. And here is also another keyboard encoder. So I hope this answers some questions and I imagine it will raise some more questions. I uh, promise you once this is all finished I will demonstrate this for you with me playing it and showing you the various controls in action. But uh, I just wanted to throw this video up there real quick as a response to a couple questions I received over the past few weeks. Um, I received a question about a uh, how did how did I do the the tracker action for these? Well, I think um, I might have misquoted myself, or you might have misunderstood. And I apologize. If I wasn't clear enough. I stated that I wanted to add a way to give a tracker feel to all these keys with the use of possibly using magnets how I would achieve that what I would do is I'd open up each of these keyboards and just beyond the pivot point I'd make a small extension probably about that big and on the underside of that extension I'd put a small magnet um, something probably a, a neodymium magnet that would make contact with a piece of metal and then when I press down on this bear with me folks my camera card that I'm using this because the internal card is filled up doesn't like this uh, camera and the speed at which it's trying to record. <clears throat> so that's how I, in theory, would achieve tracker action. Um, I have to extend the pivot point out, and there is plenty of space inside the keyboard to get past all that circuitry. There are, isn't much to these keyboards in the way of circuitry. So someday, when I have extra time on my hands, that's probably how I will achieve that tracker touch. So no. Uh, to answer your question, I did not integrate magnets into each of these. What I said was that was one idea I had to give this a tracker feel. So sorry if I misled you in my explanation. Um, alrighty. Uh, feel free to personal message me um, uh, on my uh, on my channel or comment to this video. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, I'm not the best uh, YouTube video person here in the world. Bear with me. So, we shall see. This is my uh, conversation piece. Um, I am designing a shell for it. That this will all fit into eventually all this plastic will go away and all you'll see is a nice wooden console. It'll be completely modular. I'll be able to take it apart. Talk to you later.